Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is a new series that we're going to be starting here called St. Charles Stories. We're super excited to have you all join us for it. So uh, we're going to be kicking it off here with talking with our uh, mayor, Laura Vitek, uh, getting to share some of her story and getting to you know, talk with her. So uh, also joining us on the Alliance side is our executive director, Jenna Sawicki, and our marketing Hello. specialist, Rachel Garland. Hello. So Mayor Vitek, it is a true pleasure to have you on today. We're super excited to have you and get to talk to you. So uh, essentially, we're going to be talking a little bit about you and kind of get to learn about you, uh, but also kind of go through you know, the past a little bit, talking about your time as alderman, uh, and then talking about your time as mayor and kind of the future that you have planned for St. Charles. So sound good with you? Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Awesome. Perfect. So, well, let's get to start uh, with getting some information about you. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, things like, you know, your family, how long you've been in St. Charles for, and some of the favorite things that you like to do here? Sure. So um, I'm, I haven't been in St. Charles all my life. I've just moved here probably about 10 years ago, and it was to raise my family here. Um, I have a daughter. She's 15 now. She goes to St. Charles East, and I have a son. He's 11, and he goes to Lincoln Elementary School. Um, my career has always been in philanthropy and giving back to the community, so this has been a really nice fit for me. Um, I did as I mentioned, I didn't grow up here. So I grew up in the South suburbs and that's where my entire family's from. So they're still, they still live here and they pretty much tell me I live in Iowa now. So <laughs> our West here. Right. Uh, uh, essentially, you know, like I said, I've been in philanthropy. I have a marketing background. I went to Millican university and I have a master's in business and a master's of management. And I also have a full-time job in managing this job. So I work for a dental insurance company, Delta Dental of Illinois, and I run the foundation. So we, again, giving back to the community. Uh, what I like to do here, well, not now because it's freezing, but I love to be outside. So today I you know, haven't done that. I've ran from my car to... Uh, <laughs> door. And um, I love just the river and running on the river and just being outside with my family. And I, that's mostly what I enjoy here the best, the, the fact that we have a river that runs right through our town. And I like to take advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, getting to, to, you know, experience all the things of St. Charles, like, especially that Fox river, like, you know, it's truly a great sight to see. And it's awesome that you get to enjoy that as well. So I yeah. also wanted to learn something about you too. So are you a fan of like any sports teams or anything like that? Well, just like many other um, previous mayors, I will say, we'll go with Ray. Uh, <laughs> I am a White Sox fan. And actually I have a really good story about that because my son, his name is Quinn, but it's actually Quinton. So he is named after Carlos Quinton. He was a former White Sox player. Mm -hmm. So um, those roots for me go way back too. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm happy to hear the White Sox fan being a White Sox fan myself. So glad that we can continue yes. the fortune of White Sox <laughs> mayors here too. <laughs> it continues. Yeah. Perfect. That's awesome. So let's That's uh, awesome. You know, start moving into the past a little bit. Rachel, if you want to take over from here. Yeah. So since I just kind of recently joined the Alliance team in June, I feel like I don't know as much about your past as an alderman. Can you kind of go through that process, what it was like, some of your highlights? Yeah, sure. So um, I was the fourth ward alderman, which encompasses most of downtown St. Charles for four years prior to being, being a mayor and um, never had experience in politics at all. As I mentioned at the beginning, I think the tie is that just always been involved in giving back to the community. So it was encouraged by one of my friends, um, Mr. Paul Lencioni. <laughs> There was an open seat in the fourth ward and the individual that was the former alderman, Joe Krieger was not running. So he suggested I give it a shot and I figured I would and I won the seat. And then um, from there, it just kind of took off what I, my, you know, what I love most or probably my strong suits in this area are, um, you know, mostly the fourth ward is made up of a lot of businesses. So the relationships that I've been, was able to build and have been able to build uh, with the local businesses in the fourth ward, ward I think really was something that um, really helped me in this position. I think that, you know, the, the reputation I have among businesses downtown is very strong. So um, during my tenure, I created those relationships. So I think that, and the fact that 
there's been so much going on with the First Street Project and things on First Street. I've been an advocate for everything that you guys have done and everything that the city's wanted to do. And that's been most of the, you know, my term as alderman. It was just really working with the downtown businesses and downtown community to grow it. Yeah, I yeah. can attest to that. Laura, Laura and I had a couple, mm-hmm. lots of phone calls and, and meets in meetings to uh, to talk about the different businesses. And, and absolutely, they, she was always responsive to the biz- businesses. And um, you really did create uh, an awesome reputation with them. And thank and you. And, you guys were, forward. <laughs> and easy, you guys have been easy to work with. I think we've aligned on things. So yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, it helped. Well, let's focus a little bit more um, on current and your current term as a mayor. Um, so what has gone well so far? Any surprises that you've had? Um, things you just weren't expecting to come with the job and um, any favorite moments? Okay, well, just to set the, the you know, like uh, the record here, I haven't even been in a year yet. So <laughs> no one can really fault me for anything that's happened. But a lot has happened in the short yeah. amount of time. I think that um, probably the main thing and the biggest thing in which m- many people might not think is that big of a deal, but it really is, is that we as a city had, again, had gone through a huge transition where we needed to hire new staff. So we hired a new city administrator, Heather McGuire, which was part of, you know, one of my appointments. And then we just filled the other two positions, the director of finance, and then the director of economic development. So, you know, we had a transition of many retirements, city administrator and community planning and development. So getting to the point where we were fully staffed, I'm really proud that we were able to do that. And um, for the city council and the mayor to, for it to be a unanimous decision is a very important thing. And that happened. So now that we're fully staffed, I think, um, getting the city council to, to a place where we are all now operating at, um, some experience level because we had half of a new city council. And as you can imagine, you know, trying to make decisions and set policy with um, many individuals that had never been in government before has been challenging, but I think we have so many people on council now and even our staff who really want to keep moving the city forward. So we're in a good place now. So that's been a lot of the work and also just, you know, coming out of COVID and just what, as you can imagine, things that have gone through the media and um, with Vax passport mandates and uh, masking and, you know, no one wants to get into that discussion anymore, but (laughs) That's been a little challenging and tricky to navigate, but you know, I guess my, our our message or my message has been continuing to move forward in a positive way. It's just you know we won't be here forever in this way. Uh, things are continuing to happen in St. Charles. Economic development is thriving even through all of this. So I think that you know in the first nine plus months, I'm proud of that. We're we're still growing and continuing to move forward is probably the best success so far. Yeah, that's yeah awesome. absolutely. I mean, it's been, you know, really awesome to see like how the the council and you guys have, and, and you with the mayor coming together and really, you know, growing together, as you said, you know, with a lot of these, you know, um, aldermen, you know, being new aldermen, like, you know, there was that learning curve, but it's been truly tremendous to see you guys continue to grow together, continue to really help push St. Charles forward. And, you know, I can't, I can't, I mean, I can't wait to see what you guys have in store, but you know, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all your part. So I'll let you ask that. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, you know, we kind of were think you, you kind of touched on this already, but you know, it sounds like you guys are making plans sort of, we, we have wrote down here kind of a roadmap as your time as mayor, but it sounds like you guys are, are going forward. So. Yes. And, and just, you know, to add to that, we are, we are going to be going through a process of this will be our first coming up here in the next couple of weeks. The city council will go through budgeting. We're going to be going through strategic planning this summer. Um, we're due for that. And so many of the things, not only through strategic planning, but budgeting that have been on hold that we've seen, like one example is just a bikeability and walkability study. That Those are things that have been on hold for, you know, something like that's been on hold for two years. We'll see those things moving forward likely. So I think we're in a good place to not no longer just sit. N- not that we've been um, sitting, we've had a lot happening, but now we can actually say, all right, it's time to really start to be more proactive on what we want to do as we crawl out of the pandemic here. So that's exciting. With that, with that survey that you're doing, is that, can you touch on some of the positive things that could come out of that? 
Or... Yeah. So um, just with so much that happens, you know, as I mentioned, one of my favorite things to do here is be outdoors. And we have many opportunities with local businesses that encourage outdoor activity, whether that be biking or walking. And then the parks here in St. Charles will be involving a lot of different parties, the park district, for example, um, local businesses like Sammy's who, you know, have bike biking rides on evenings where they plan out where they're going. We need that kind of feedback and information just so people can better navigate the city. So um, we're trying to encourage people to walk more and to be outside more, but in a safe way to do that. So those are the kinds of things we're trying to find out are safe and, you know, user-friendly ways to navigate the city is what we're hoping to get out of that. That's, that's awesome. That's music to our ears for sure. <laughs> um, so our next question here is, uh, you know, if you had to sum up a legacy that you'd want to leave behind, um, what would that be? I know you're only 10 months in and I know that because I have a 10 month old and oh, yeah. <laughs> you were, yeah, because you, uh, you won the election literally on my due date. So, um, just, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I always know how long you've been in office for, um, but yeah, do you have any legacy or things you'd like to leave behind? I know you still have a lot more time, but you know, anything that you want to be you know, thought of as you. As sure. You I think that, um, definitely growth. I want, you know, I do, I like growth. I like the direction St. Charles is headed and I wanted, I want to be associated with that. Um, and in leaving St. Charles in a better place that I found it, I guess is something. Um, I don't want to lose the beauty that we have here. We have so much going for us that, you know, my intention is to leave it again in a, a growing, beautiful state. Um, I also want to, you know, I don't know how to really, I, I, I guess I want every, everyone that's here to think, it, you know, make it, leaving it in a place for everyone, that everyone, whether you're younger, older, um, from here or not from here, that you're included, that, that, that we have something for everyone. So I guess that's, you know, my legacy is the energy that I bring for everyone to feel like they're included and everyone to feel like they belong here and um, leave it in a beautiful place. So. Yeah. So growth, <laughs> inclusion, and energy are the yeah. big, the, the buzzwords. I think that, that would sum it up. Yes. Okay. Your first book, you, that could be your title. <laughs> <laughs> I'm copywriting that right now though. So you have to get me to <laughs> buy the permission first. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, um, well, I mean, awesome job, Mayor Vitek. Uh, you know, we got two more questions for you. This one is a question that we're bringing back from our original series. So we like to ask everyone because, you know, everyone has different answers to this. And it's always cool to kind of see, um, you know, what kind of goes through people's head when they're asked this. So um, this question is, is uh, if you were queen of St. Charles for the day, what would be your first proclamation? Why? Well, I know you're already kind of queen of St. Charles with being no. the mayor, but <laughs> like, if you had absolute power, like what would be your first proclamation? <laughs> um, well, it's the message, you know, cheesy or not, it's the message that I leave with my kids and I've led through everything I've done. It's two things. Like everyone should be working hard. It's my proclamation. I feel like everyone should work hard. Um, I've, I work hard. I teach my children work hard. More importantly though, my proclamation would be about being a good human. Uh, I've had conversations recently with people about respect and empathy. And those are the kinds of things that, you know, I, I respect people. I'm considerate, uh, considerate of what people have gone through in their life and we never know what they have gone through. So uh, being a good human is I think something that um, in today's age and coming out of the stress and just things that have happened, I remind my friends, they remind me, I remember, rem remind my family, they remind me that's the one of the most important things I think um, any town should have really. Yeah. So, and that looked like, that. you know, like a day of kindness. Like everyone just has to be yeah. nice to each other for a day. <laughs> it's a human day. And that should Perfect. be every day, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> I like that even better. Every day is, is yep. a human day. Love it. Okay. <laughs> so, well, Mayor Vitek, you know, awesome job with the questions here. Uh, one more question. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to say to the St. Charles community before we wrap up here? Just, um, you know, keep doing what you're all doing. I, I think the people in this community are what make it great. And, um, there's so many opportunities for people to give back. So I encourage anyone who wants to get the, give back to the community to contact me. We can always use good people. And the, as I mentioned, there are so many good people that live and work here. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting all of you. So. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, we're excited to, to you know, have you as our mayor. 
can't wait to see as yeah. you know your term continues to progress and all the great things they're going to do for our town here so um that'll wrap up our uh st charles stories first episode Woohoo! Yeah. Been a great episode so we'll have more coming down the line but until then everyone um stay safe stay healthy and we'll see you all next time thank you and thank you for all of what you all do as the business alliance too appreciate it oh thank, thank you, thank you. We appreciate thank you. That. <laughs> hey everyone thank you again for listening to our saint charles stories we're excited to continue this uh series as we start to build it up with some more stories so uh, a few announcements as we wrap up the video here um, if you haven't checked out our upcoming events, make sure to go to our website, www.stcalliance.org. Go check out the amazing events that we got going on down here uh, and be a part of the community. We're always looking for volunteers for those too. So if you're interested in volunteering, the information's in the events on how to volunteer. So hope to see you guys down here for that. We're also going to be sharing some more St. Charles stories. If you have a cool story about St. Charles and you know kind of want to share your perspective on it, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can reach out to me by calling my office number 630-443-3963 or shoot me an email. Uh, nwent at sdcalliance.org is where you can reach me at. So love to, to see if we can get some really cool stories on here, some cool perspectives. So uh, feel free to reach out if you have some, uh, some good ideas. Last up is something that we're super, super excited about. We are launching our visit widget, which is a uh, app that's going to be uh, available to, uh, on our website, but also you can download it to your phone where you can build your own custom itinerary of things that you can do here in St. Charles. So we have a little video here to explain how it goes. So here's the video. Mm -hmm.